Before we get into this, I really regret not doing this a couple days earlier because I was calling this amongst my Chinese friends that at some point the government or, you know, Chinese people are going to attribute this new coronavirus, this new SARS to America and say that America planted this on China. And yeah, yeah, that's going around in the WeChat circles right now. I literally am flabbergasted. I was almost half kidding. But anyway, here's why you should care about the new coronavirus in China. This cousin of SARS is a virus that causes respiratory problems, but can also cause diarrhea, fatigue, shortness of breath, respiratory distress, and kidney failure. Depending on the patient's age, the death rate with SARS, well, at least this brand of SARS, it seems to range from about 0 to 50% of the cases, with older people being the most vulnerable. Many are claiming that this virus originated in Wuhan, which is in South Central China, being brought on by seafood at a wet market. I can tell you one thing, if you've been to a Chinese wet market, you will know exactly how a megavirus or a bacterial infection could begin here. Chinese wet markets are a proverbial zoo of disease, with animals being slaughtered, chopped, mixed, and coming from random sources. And at the end of the day, the blood and guts are simply washed down the floor drains with a hose, without an ounce of disinfectant being used. Rinse and repeat, and the next morning it begins again. These markets are an absolute paradise for viral and bacterial growth and mutation, and largely go unchecked. There are around 700 plus reported cases right now of the coronavirus, with a majority found in Wuhan, but it's spread to different countries in Asia. Now this is the dangerous part. I'm very skeptical about these figures, and a simple look at history shows us that this is nothing new. Back in 2003, SARS, or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, ravaged China and claimed hundreds of lives. It was thought to have come from a market in Guangdong, in southern China, where I lived, and actually where my wife's from as well. Unfortunately, no one was really talking about it until it hit Hong Kong. When SARS hit Hong Kong, they quarantined and dealt with the outbreak with utmost vigilance, while mainland China tried to keep it hush-hush in order to preserve social order. They didn't want a bunch of people freaking out and causing anarchy. Social order is, at all times, the most important feature of Chinese governance. Unfortunately, Trying to keep a lid on the news of an outbreak just meant that it allowed the virus to spread, and measures couldn't properly be implemented to stop it. Doctors that I spoke to remember the grim experience of SARS and told me that they were given special orders at a top provincial level to not spread awareness, but instead when a patient comes in with symptoms, to tell them just to stay home and not to go out. With an elderly generation that is largely undereducated, most people just went out anyway and continued to buy and sell at the wet markets. Fast forward and thousands had contracted the virus and the beginning of a pandemic started. This, however, is not limited to disease. When the 2008 Sichuan earthquake happened that killed 70,000 people, the officials knew why and shut down all communication which ended up in more deaths. The deaths were largely attributed to the fact that everyone lived in concrete buildings and many of them had not been built to code due to bribery and corruption on a local and provincial level. The officials blocked messages, calls, and any effort to spread awareness for aid, all in the name of stopping the flow of information that might challenge the CCP's claim to rule. There's a thing in Chinese culture called the Mandate of Heaven, which basically means that when a dynasty is at its end, it will be marked by a great tragedy usually natural disaster. And that's the signal for political change. And although this is an older idea, the Communist Party of China would rather have thousands of people die, cut off its citizens from the affected area, all to preserve its right to lead. I'm concerned that this virus that is currently spreading like wildfire has been a thing for a while, so I contacted a physician that I personally knew. My suspicions were confirmed and he told me that they were again given orders to tell people to stay home, this time to wear a mask, but were explicitly told not to spread the information outside of the doctor's office and not even to share the messages about it to other medical professionals. This was last month. You don't believe me? You think uh, face isn't that important in China? Well, check this out. Baibuting community, which is in Wuhan, where the, you know, the entire virus started, literally in a village seven kilometers away from the South China seafood city where the virus started, they organized 100,000 people to share a massive community meal. And just two days before this massive harmonious event, 59 cases were reported in the area. 
Yet with this knowledge, state media managed to promote a communal banquet where everyone eats from the same dishes together. Literally, where the virus started. No worries, the virus doesn't exist, right? Keep the harmony. We now have an official death toll of at least six, and it's rising. But I suspect that the 700 declared affected individuals is much, much higher. Notice that it took international cases of the virus to make the government finally issue a statement. It wasn't a domestic issue anymore. I've said this for years, but the Chinese government seems competent in massive infrastructure projects and grand leadership until you look at smaller details, like building materials, societal issues, health care, and more. Top-down leadership means that the government has always waited into the last minute to deal with a crisis because no one wants their head on the line to break the bad news. That's how top-down politics work. CCTV, which is Chinese Communist Party state media, quoted the leader of China in an address to the public to be vigilant, but the underlying message was to not freak out and preserve social harmony. Quote, Party committees, governments, and relevant departments at all levels should put people's lives and health first. They should ensure the masses will have a quiet, peaceful, and joyous spring festival. There were no messages about how to address the crisis, just that now it's on the local communist authorities to deal with it. Talk about passing the blame. Chinese New Year is the biggest migration in the world each year, and millions of people head to their hometowns to visit family. This is because a huge chunk of the population has moved to the urban areas, and a lot of them are very, very far from home. So it's their one chance per year to go home and see family. This means crowded trains, crowded planes, crowded buses, and these are ripe breeding grounds for the virus. Also, keep in mind, a huge chunk of the population, especially the people that grew up in the lost generation, do not believe in Western medicine or even very basic elements of bacteria or viruses. They believe in traditional Chinese medicine. So this information is not going to be super helpful for them. Now, I'm extremely happy that this broke international news as fast as it did, but I'm terrified for the Chinese people who are not being properly educated on what to do in this very dangerous time. It's not time to have a peaceful and joyous spring festival. It's time to tell your citizens how to deal with this potential pandemic. Put your credibility to the test and not your political face-saving maneuvers and work on an international level to save your citizens and to prevent this from becoming a global crisis. I lived in China too long to know how things are dealt with. I mean, when my city banned motorcycles completely, they brought in a bunch of officials to make sure it actually happened and had cops snatching bikes left and right. But as soon as they left, the cops stopped cracking down on the motorcycles. And this is always how it works. It's always to impress the next guy up. So when you have a situation like this, a local area like Wuhan would rather just clamp down on it and say, hey, it's not that bad. This is totally not an outbreak. Uh, don't worry about anything. We got this under control. They'd rather do that so that they don't get in trouble from the next guy up, let's say provincially, or maybe even at a national level. I mean that people have gotten the virus, but I've already gotten videos from my friends in Huizhou, where I lived, of multiple people being shipped off in kind of bubbles, basically, to protect the, the spread. So when they're not reporting on where this is actually happening, I'm in, and I'm relying on friends to send me videos that they're seeing out their window, I have a feeling that this one out of thousands of Chinese cities if I'm getting videos from this place, I have a feeling it's much, much worse than it actually is. Now, it has kind of taken hold of the uh, Chinese internet and they're doing their best to kind of like calm it down, but I'd like to end this on a fun note with some hilarious memes and uh, coronavirus related jokes that my Chinese friends have been sharing. During Chinese New Year, uh, people hand out something called a hongbao, which is like a red envelope. And usually that's full of money. Um, in this case, they're handing out Hongbao full of uh, face masks to prevent the spread of the virus, which I thought was pretty funny. This one's getting real popular with different variations, but I, I believe this is the original. Um, the dude in like a full hazmat suit talking to some guy in a window and it says, come on, let's go out and play. Here's some different uh, variations on mask wearing techniques. This guy's made a little peephole so you can see out of it, but this woman, she's uh, completely blind to the scenario. While this woman is, I believe, wearing 10 different masks, which I think may weigh it down and let the virus sneak in a little more. Look at this absolute G. Everyone is protecting themselves with their masks, but this guy doesn't give a. This guy definitely wins the badass competition though. He is decked out. This is a WeChat message, which is like a Chinese social media messaging app. 
And the guy says, hey, do you want to hang out? I just landed. And the person replies, where from? And he says, Wuhan. Wuhan is where the, uh, the coronavirus started. <laughs> do you want to have dinner together? And uh, then he gets blocked. Poor lad. There was this game back in the day where you either like prevent or promote the spread of a pandemic. And this is exactly, exactly what the government would be worried about is they don't want the, you know, the country to go into anarchy because of this. Anyway, I want to wish everyone out there a happy Chinese New Year. Please stay safe. Um, if you are a Chinese viewer that is heading back to China to visit family, please stay vigilant. Make sure you're covered up. Try to avoid any unnecessary travel if possible. I really think this has potential to spiral out of control. But either way, I do appreciate all of you guys. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash 86 I post all kinds of behind the scenes stuff and you can contact me directly there. And I want to say thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you uh, next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget, you can check out a ADV China motorcycle talk show on two wheels every single Monday at 1 p.m. EST. And you can check out a Serpent ZA video every single Friday, just in time for a beer at 1 p.m. EST. And we got our new car channel, which is called Worthless Whips. We buy a car for $1,000, fix it up, review it, and then flip it for a profit. If you haven't checked it out yet, please go subscribe to Worthless Whips. Thank you so much, Low Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.